Today is Friday, September 8th, 2017. My name is Edna Sussman. I'm a reference librarian here at the Half Hollow Hills Community Library. We're interviewing Joseph DeSena, a Vietnam Army veteran, as part of our Veterans Testimonial Project and in collaboration with the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project. Thank you so much, Joe, for your service and for participating in our project today. It was my pleasure. Joe, where and when were you born? I was born in 1943, March 25th, 1943, and I uh, was born in Nola, Naples, a town right outside of Naples in Italy. In Italy. Uh, who and uh, who were your parents, and what, what did they do? What were their names? My father was Domenico di Sena, my mother Lucia. Nice Italian uh, names. Yeah. Did they meet in Italy? Yes. Okay. They were born, they were on the farm, farm uh, people. Okay. So th what did they do for work? Oh, uh, they uh, worked their farm. Farm. Yeah. So, did you have any? Do you have any siblings? Yeah, they had eight kids, eight of us, four boys, four girls. Wow. Yeah. What were their names? Oh, uh, Bernardo, Miguel, Giacomino, Angelina, Anna, Maria, Joe, and Rosa. Nice. Very nice. Um, did any of them serve in the military? Uh, two of them were in the Italian. Army. Oh, during what period? Uh, no, no, they, there was no war then. There uh -huh. was, that was in the earth. Just served? Yeah, in the 50s. Oh, okay. Yeah. My brother was in the Navy, the oldest one, and the other one was in the uh, uh, Carabinieri. It's like a military a police. Police, like, yeah. Uh -huh. So both were in the Italian mil yes. military service. Yes, and also the, the third one, Giacomino, he's served in the Army in Italy, too. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. And your dad I not? I was too young. Oh, you My father, young? yes, he was in the cavalry. In 1918, I, I got pictures of him really? at home, yeah. During World War One. On a horse. Wow. He was on a horse. Really? Yeah. During World War One. Well, oh, is that... A 18, yeah. 1918. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Nice. Wow. What were you doing before you entered the service? Or better yet, did you... When did you come over to America? In 1956. 56. I was uh, 13 years old. Okay. So, what, what were you doing before you entered the service? Uh, work, uh, odd job, construction. I had a, uh, I used to work with that guy named Fabian in Maspeth. I lived in Maspeth, Queens. Queens? Yeah. And uh, I did construction work. Okay. And when your folks came over, um, so they got rid of the farm or they sold the farm and then what did they do when oh, they... Yeah. they? they, you know, they better themselves by coming here. You know, my, my brother's, uh, my father's brother, had a um, he had a business construction uh -huh. here and, and he yes uh -huh. he sponsored us. Oh, you nice. needed a sponsor in those right. days. To come My on. parents did too. Yeah. Yep. So, so they worked with your brother then in construction, or your dad did. My yeah my, yeah, my father worked with his brother, mm -hmm. and then uh, whenever they needed me, uh, instead of going to school, I worked. Wow. Yeah. So when you came over here, did you attend public school? Or something? Yes. Yeah. And did you graduate from high school? Uh, never went to school. <laughs> At, but, but you came... They always had me working. Yes. Oh. They, they registered in school. You had to. It was the law. Right. But uh, I, I hardly went. Oh, wow. Because you had to work. Right. Wow. So you didn't finish. You didn't go to high school. No. Wow. That's a, You're amazing. You're amazing. I didn't go to school in Italy because I was working on a farm. Mm -hmm. I remember six years old, you know, doing manual labor in the farm. Wow. What kind of farm was it? Oh, we raised everything that we live on because oh. we didn't, uh, nobody had a job. Mm -hmm. We all uh, made our living on uh, growing tomatoes, potatoes, and mm -hmm. go to a, what they call a mercado, you know, a market. Okay. And you sold your goods. Did you have animals too on the farm? We had eggs. Uh, we had chicken. For eggs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, cows, uh, pigs. Oh, you did! Wow, yeah. that's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. a farm like that. Wow. Um, so, what branch of the military did you serve again? I was drafted in the army. You were drafted. Yes, okay. ma'am. You didn't have a choice of <laughs> no. of which branch to be in. Well, I was. I had a choice, you but did. I was an idiot about it. <laughs> Why? I, the Italian government sent a letter that you were drafted into the army. And I wrote back, you know, denied that I'm in America, I don't want to go. Oh. And a few months later, I get a letter from the U.S. Army, you're drafted. How old were you then? Um, 18. Ah, okay. 
And uh, my father says, you idiot, there's a, there's a, a, a war. What are you doing? You should have went to the Italian Army. It was Vietnam. So mm. that's how I wound up being in the U.S. Army. Wow. Huh. That was 60... 1965. 65. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Um, so what happened when you departed for training camp and during your early days of training? What was that? Where did you go for it was training? Just, it was strange. You know, they put on... It, 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 we went to Whitehall Street. They put you on a train to uh, South Carolina, Fort Jackson. Okay. It's in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And the, we had a busy training. How long was the training? Uh, it's uh, about two months, two months, a little bit over two months. How was that? <laughs> it's something different <laughs> in my life, anyway. Oh. I never knew, you know, anything like that. What did you, what did they teach you? Oh, first of all, the, the calisthenics, uh -huh. you know, the running every morning before you have uh, breakfast. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it's it was beautiful. I mean, and listen, when you look back at it, it was a great life. Really? Yes. Wow. And you had to learn weaponry and yes, you had to shoot your M14 rifle. Hmm. Oh. Uh, when I was in uh, Vietnam, I had a, a sidearm, a, a 45 pistol. Oh, really? Yes. It I drove a jeep. But, oh, uh, you had to have that. Well, you didn't have to, but I acquired one. Oh, I see. Through channels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, do you recall your instructors for basic training? What were they like? It was great. His name was Sergeant Figueroa. Mm -hmm. Fifty years later, I remember this guy. Yeah, that's wonderful. And uh, a lieutenant named Thompson. Mm -hmm. He was the uh, company commander. Why do you remember their names? I don't know. What? Oh, wow. I remember Lieutenant Chayaskis from Vietnam. You know, the company commander. He was the first lieutenant. Uh -huh. And. Uh, and I put a sergeant named Dunlap, oh. but he got rotated uh, two or three months after I got there. Okay. But I remember him, he was a gentleman, good really? guy. And your instructors in basic training were? Very nice, yes. Very nice. Wow. How long was that? Two months, you yeah, said? Two months. a little over two months. So from South Carolina then, where did you go? Well, they gave me orders to go to um, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, okay. the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, but I wasn't with the, uh, I thought I was airborne. I didn't, you know, you applied to go into the airborne. I didn't apply for it. Oh. But I was sent there into a, of all things, a medical unit. Oh. The 61st Medical Battalion. Okay. And uh, they broke me into, uh, there was a guy from Long Island. His name was Joe something. Yeah. Uh, Sleeva, something like Silva? that. Silva? No. And he, uh, he had to train me on this, what they call a five-ton wrecker. It's a big truck with a, a boom on it, you know, like a crane. Okay. And, yeah, and he, he had to teach me, uh, because he was rotating, uh -huh. he was in charge of the truck, and, he would, and it had to be his replacement. But how does that relate to the medical? Well, the medical unit had a um, wrecker for, Whenever, if you went somewhere, uh, if there was a conflict and you had, they had ambulances and all, and it had to be picked up, towed, or oh, I know, see. They had, a, it had a boom on it. It's like a crane. Mm -hmm. that so that's how they transported the vehicles to get fixed. It, right, to get fixed. Right. To get fixed. How long were you there? Uh, from um, I, the basic uh, for June, from June till uh, uh, November, December. They, that's when I got transferred from Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Um, I got transferred to uh, Oakland, California. Okay. A, a, a replacement center, and mm -hmm. from there I went to J Japan, and then to Vietnam. How long were you in California? Was that pretty quick? No, it was uh, maybe two or three weeks. Oh, what did you? I do don't remember exactly, but. Oh, did you still have more training? There? No, no. So you just waited to go to Japan, right? But was that all by ship, or they flew you, or? No, you fly. You, you fly. fly. Yeah. So how long were you in Japan? Uh, that I don't remember. I think it was like two weeks because we had to wait uh, for enough people to fill in a plane because yeah. they had a C-141. It's one of these huge planes. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was a, a whole bunch of guys. At it, what point did you know you were going to be sent over to Vietnam? Well, when I was in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, the 61st Medical Battalion mm -hmm. that I was uh, attached to, that was, um, first it was a, uh, 101st Airborne Division, mm -hmm. they went over. 
and the captain of my company, uh, uh, the medical unit, uh, he sent me over to uh, 101st Airborne. To I had I, being, being I was an operator with that crane, mm -hmm. and I, I had a load for three days straight. I worked uh, loading 101st Airborne uh, jeeps, trucks, trailers, everything they had to take with them. Connex, you know, full of ammunition, guns. Oh. And, um, it's these steel boxes. Okay. And my job was to stay there, and they would pull up, and I would. You know, somebody would put the grappling hooks on, mm -hmm. and I would put them on the, uh, wow. the train bed to uh, be tied down and transport to California. They were going to the to a ship in, I don't know, somewhere in California, Oakland or something. I don't know. Okay, but at that point, why did why did they want you to leave that and then go off to Nam or? Because you're all the 61st. Uh, I don't know why I was left behind. Yeah. 61st, 61st Medical Battalion was called to Vietnam. Oh, I see. When when we transferred to, uh, uh, then when they left, I went on leave, and this, uh, and I got a letter to go to. Uh, I went on leave, and then I went to Camp Alpha in in uh, Vietnam. Oh wow, huh? Um. So the specialized training you had was in on working that equipment and those yes, the truck, yes, the trucks. I guess they didn't need me anymore because they were going to Nam and I see. I don't think they took that truck with them. So. Oh okay. Now, how was it adapting to military life? Like the barracks and the food. And oh, the orders, the food. It, you know, it's it, it, it. Social life. Was there any social life? Uh, well, no. But in, in basic training, it was fun. Because we we were in Columbus, South Carolina, okay, and we went to a dance mm -hmm. right before we graduated, and they, somehow there was four of us from New York, and we decided to dance, uh, and, and they hated us. Why? The Southerners. They hated. Oh, you Yankee. could you yeah. could feel that. I'm sorry. You could feel that. Oh yeah. In well, they tell you. Oh. Are these Southern soldiers? Yes. Oh, why? I guess they don't like northerners. Is that it? Well, yes, southern, uh, uh, southern hospitality, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How was it when you left? You weren't necessarily with the same group when you were sent to California, then Japan, no, then no, no. You, I went alone to where every place was sent. Oh, okay. And How, did you live in barracks in South Carolina? Yes. Barracks. Yes. Was that like a big room, or how was that? Yeah, it's a. It's a Huge room with about 50, 60 guys. Oh, wow. In the double bunks, you know. Okay. Was it pretty much segregated, like Southerners, yes. Northerners? Yes. No, 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 no. It was, it was everybody together, black, white, Spanish, okay. everything. Okay. It's it, it just that they let you know that they were Southerners and oh. you're a Northerner, you weren't welcome. <laughs> that's terrible. Um, In those days, 60s? I guess oh, that's, God. Yeah, that's true. Civil rights yeah. hadn't really taken yeah. off. Yeah. Listen. Today is a beautiful, different world. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, how was the food? You know, you get you, you learn to like it. Uh, when you get hungry, you eat. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so you got to Japan, and you're only there a few weeks in Japan? Yes. And then wh where were you sent in Vietnam from Japan? Uh, in Saigon, a, a place called Tansanut Air Base. Okay. It's about two miles outside of Saigon. Okay. And they send you to uh, Camp Alpha. There was two camps, Camp Alpha and Camp Bravo. Were they near each other? Yes. Oh, and what were you supposed to be doing there? Oh, you just, uh, if they need uh, help somewhere, like any unit, you go, you know, like you, you go and clean up, uh, what do you call cake, either KP or, uh, you know, do the dishes. Or, whatever had to be yeah, done. Yeah, whatever had to be done, you did. And then you got assigned to a unit, and you go there, and they have a job for you. What was your job? I got, you know what? I got so lucky. Oh, good. Oh, a guy named Mike Anzalone. I love that man. I don't know where all he's at, but he saw my name, mm -hmm. the San Italian, born in Italy. He saw him from New York. He was from the Bronx. Oh, you're kidding. Wow. So he comes there. He says, "Don't say a word. Keep quiet." Why? He said, "Don't worry." So anyway, what's my name, you know, all right, so we go out, he puts me in a Jeep, get, a, get all your stuff, he says, I just saved your life. I said, really, why? He says, you scheduled to, to go to uh, 
Kuchi with the 25th Infantry Division, oh. and they got the hell kick out of them, those guys. Wow. And uh, it was right by the Cambodian border. Cambodian border? Cambo yeah. Inside, in Vietnam, but, you know, the border where you know, all the stuff was going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, so he says, uh, you're going to be with us. I said, what do I do? He says, don't worry, anything. So we, I went with the... Uh, Engineers. Oh, nice. So I, I did hot jobs there, which it was great. It was How come a, he could do that? Who was he? I don't know. He knew somebody. Oh. And he pulled my name Because you were from New York and he yeah. was from New York. Yeah. I guess they needed a body or something because yeah. a replacement said that anybody that needs a soldier, they go there and they get him. Ah. That's what they call replacement center. Oh, I see. Okay. And it was short in an area or something, you know? Mm -hmm. they, they, uh, so the guy goes, uh, what's your MOS? What's an MOS? Yeah, like, what is listen, that? I wasn't educated. I right. came from Millie, no school, nothing. Right. What is an MOS? MOS is the job description of what you do oh. when you qualify in. Okay. So the guy, the sergeant goes, what you do in uh, civilian life? I said, work at construction, you know. I uh, said, well, okay, come here. He puts me in a, 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 a this, uh, the, it was like a house that they took over oh. from Vietnamese. Oh. He says, uh, can you build a bar here for the guys? So they gave me plywood, saws, nails, and, and I built a bar. Nice. I mean, it wasn't pretty, but I built it. It worked, yeah. 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 Nice. What, how long were you doing that? Oh, I, I did that for about a month, and then uh, the company commander's driver got rotated to the uh, U.S. Uh -huh. He had to come back home, and uh, his tour of duty was over. Mm -hmm. And uh, they needed a driver, so I did it uh, as a... Uh, Temporary, mm -hmm. and then this lieutenant got the company command. He got rotated also, and this guy, Lieutenant Chayaska, is from Nebraska. Mm -hmm. He uh, he came in, and you know, you know, real one of those mid American guys, you know. So uh, he says, "Yo, you got to get yourself a driver." So what's the matter with you? I said, "I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not your regular. I'm just doing this." Uh, Filling in. All right, so you know what you're doing? Keep doing it. So I became his driver. So was this a Jeep or a truck? Or yes, a Jeep, yes. A Jeep? Yeah. I think he used to call M151, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a small, it, as a matter of fact, I had pictures the other day. Very nice, I loved it. You it loved had a radio. it? It had a radio, and it had, a, every time something happened, you would uh, get the radio, put the right channel on, you have to look up the code for that day. Oh, yeah, security a, code, you yes. mean? Oh, wow. And, and what was funny was, uh, yeah, when Chiaski was uh, with driving, he says, let's, let's go to Long, Long Bend, because we were headquarters, headquarters company, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the 18th engineer brigade, and he had to payroll, so he had to go up to different units and pay them. Ah. So, uh, he, he, and I would drive him to Long Bend, mm -hmm. uh, it was like 18 miles away. How did you know? There was no GPS then. How did no, you know no, how to go? No, but he would know. You know, he goes, all right, you make a left here, make a right there. You know, you learn. Oh, okay. You know, after a while, you learn okay. the country. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great job. Did you feel unsafe? I mean, all of Vietnam was unsafe. Yes, of course. Well, what I did was, after I found out what my job was, mm -hmm. that he told me that you were, uh, um, you want to be my driver, Okay, so I, I, I got a, um, I had a friend in the, in the 25th Infantry Division, and he got me a 45 automatic that okay. they, I guess they took off a dead somebody. Mm -hmm. So, and I wore that. When you drive, I used to take the gun out um, and put it under my leg. Because what they used to do in those days, you, if, the, if you had to go to the, anywhere in, in, out of Tanson, out of Tanson Air Base, the, you know, you're in traffic, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of bikes, scooters, and those days, they were, what they were doing is they get a grenade and throw it in a Jeep, and oh, they would turn around and go the other way, you know, like it. Yep. So I, I always put a gun uh, either in your hand that you're showing it, mm -hmm. you know, that you're ready, or under your leg, that mm -hmm. way, you know, you're always ready for something once wow. you went out of your uh, uh, safe the, zone. The base, out of the base. Yeah. Well, how come the army didn't issue you one re regularly? I mean, yeah, that's well, a dangerous the, the job. The only ones that are allowed to have uh, sidearms uh, in Vietnam was the officers. Really? Yeah, which I got in some trouble for. 
Uh, a, a, a major came to me and goes, I, then I was a, a P3. Mm -hmm. He goes, hey, uh, private. Uh, he goes, this, uh, he goes uh, would you get that side on? I said, why? He says, you're not, you're not authorized to wear that. Mm -hmm. So I says, what do you mean? He says, I, I need one and I can't get one. And I, I, I want that gun. What do you do? Uh. So I went to my lieutenant, you know, and I told him, lieutenant, this guy's taking my gun away from me. I, I bought him my own money. So he goes, so did you tell him? He said, well, he doesn't want to hear it. So he went in and he talked to him and he <laughs> left me alone. Wow. But, you know, drivers, that's a dangerous job. Very. So it should have been routine that they all were yes. allowed to carry an, yeah. an arm, a yeah. sidearm. Wow. I mean, how do you protect I mean, yourself? You know, I, when, I, when you said, okay, we're going on payroll. He said, bring the shotgun. Hmm. So I used to carry a 12-gauge shotgun. Oh. And right in the middle of the Jeep where he sits, and I said, is it like a, a, a stand? A spot? Oh. Yeah, a spot for the gun. Oh. Uh, and I, 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 I was crazy. When I went out there with him, especially if we're going up to Long Bend or Benoit, I used to carry a uh, ammo box. Oh. My M14, I had an automatic. Mm. And I used to have a whole bunch of ammo because I said, I'll never get caught shorter ammo. It's a lot not. of guys used to run out of ammunition and die. Mm. They used to put the, you know, shoot themselves not to be prisoners. Oh, From what I heard that, you right. know, like I, right. I don't know how true it was. Wow. The thing is, if you get confronted or whatever, you got to act quick and you have to yeah. have... Yeah. Uh, so you're really protecting your guy, the lieutenant. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So that's why I don't understand why you couldn't have a gun. Well, you know, I guess the rules they have, uh, you know, officers, are, I don't know. Wow. Um, okay, wow. So you were really, you were always close to the front lines, actually. There were no lines where it was? No, there was no lines there. It just, the only time we ever, we never went out to any operations or anything. We mm -hmm. never went out looking for trouble, like the 25th Infantry or, oh, okay. or the airborne guys, you know, they just go out and look for a fight because mm -hmm. that's their job. Mm -hmm. We were more or less background, Okay. Uh, you know, support. Okay. But being that, the air base was like about 200 feet away from us. They used to get attacked a lot. The air base would get attacked? Yes, because oh. you got jet fighters, and they used to have these cement enclosures for mm -hmm. cement, for, for the uh, jet fighters. Oh. In case one blows up, they don't all blow up. Uh -huh. um, and matter of fact, they always came under mortar attack. Mm -hmm. And one night they came in, uh, there was 30, 33 of them the next morning. We counted the bodies on the, on the tarmac. Um, they uh, blew up uh, the ammo dump. Oh, wow. And they blew up planes, uh, uh, helicopters, because there are a lot of helicopters there. And that's what, what's killing them, mm -hmm. the helicopters, jet fighters. Mm -hmm. And that's what they wanted to get rid of. Wow. Yeah. And we, we, so how did those 33 guys on the tarmac get killed? Oh, dogs did most of it. Dogs? The Air Force guys had these uh, canines, mm -hmm. and, uh, and when they, every time they came under attack, the dogs would do their job. They were great. And plus, you know, the, the security, the, uh, yeah. they, they had their Air Force. They were keeping watch all yeah. the time. Yeah, always, always guard duties, you know? So what did the dogs, they just attack them, or how did that well, work? Well, they, you know, there's a guy shooting at them, so, you know, he'll let them loose and let them go get them. And they would, they would do it. They would, they would attack right here. They would mm. open up their throat. Wow. Yeah. I saw that on, on the... Uh, I, on I the never way. knew that. Yeah. Did any so dogs... Amazing. Dogs got killed, too? Oh, yeah. 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 Were they dogs they brought over from America, or they... Yeah, they were trained. Trained, in yeah. trained service dogs. Yes. Just like here, the cops. Yeah. They're so great. Yeah. God, They're dogs. amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. So, did you hear this going on when you were back at the base? Could you hear it? See it? Say what? This, these types of attacks at the air, air base. You were back I at was the... was there. Oh, you were right there. I was right there. The, our unit, if, if you were here, and if you go around a corner, 150 feet, you turn right into the airport. The mm -hmm. runway was right there. Oh, I see. A lot of times when I had nothing to do, I would tell the lieutenant, do you need me for an hour? He goes, no, no, go ahead. And I would go around the corner and just... Watch the uh, jet fighters land or take off, you know, like wow, yeah, it was beautiful. And you know, your military could go anywhere you want, and <laughs> and I did that. Uh, wow, it was nothing to do. So, you go look at the jet fighters huh. take off and land and all. 
How was it living on the base? Did you also had barracks there, or how, how did you? We slept we in tents. 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 Yes. Was it really hot? Or yes. It was hot. Uh, you were there. How many? How you know what I hated the most was the rats. Oh God. Yeah, there was a. Uh, and but one good thing about the uh, army, they gave us these. Uh, um, we were tents and then bunks, and we had nets. Uh, okay. To, uh, Each person walk. had their own net. Yeah. Oh. And whenever you slipped in, you tuck the net under your mattress. That oh. way, nothing comes in. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, was, how awful! How did you get rid of the rats? They just left in the. We day. had a guy. He set up a trap. Mm. He was a southern boy, mm. and he uh, he would get a garbage pail full of water, and he would get the rats and keep them in there. Oh God! And he wanted to see how long they would live because you know rats go in the water and all that. But right. How but long do he, they live? I don't remember exactly, but he, he killed quite a few. Wow. Did, you probably had to get shots and everything before you went. Oh, God. Yeah? I hit needles oh. because of that. Oh. When we first got there, you go through this line of guys. There's mm -hmm. guys on both sides. And, and, and they came out, you know, everywhere you go, they give you a needle with the... Uh, you know, to make a little right. This was before you went over there? No, this is over there. Over there? Yeah. They, uh... Uh, there's a line of guys and that with air, you know, mm -hmm. giving you shots. Oh God, I walked out of there like this. Wow, but I guess it's a good thing. Otherwise, there's oh, yeah. a lot of stuff oh, yeah. you could pick up there. Yeah, malaria, all sorts of sickness. Wow. Um, okay, so, did, so did you were you witnessed casualties and and a lot of destruction. Yes, yeah. and you, the, the worst part was when I used to drive the lieutenant on the uh, to, to see he had a buddy that was uh, a jet a jet four what do you call one or one or four jet it, it, it's a jet fighter okay he was a pilot and he used to go visit him he mm -hmm. said drive me to Tans and we'll go see so and so lieutenant so and so and and um, you saw uh, planes come in mm -hmm. and they would take these there was a lot of body bags mm -hmm. that's the sight I could uh -oh. stand American body bags yes oh. And I had to fight one of the guys there because, you know, I'm there I'm next to my jeep waiting for the lieutenant. And the guy would get the bag and just throw it. I said, oh, hey, wow. that's an American soldier, man. What are you doing? Yeah. Wow. I don't know, and we got into a, a verbal and mm -hmm. I walked away. Cause yeah. Wow. It, it's, that's uh, I guess if you do it all day long, every day, you know, but still, you got to respect the body, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. We lost a hell of a lot of people there, right? Yes. Yeah. Did you I think have, it was fifty-five thousand, something I, like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, what what kind of friendships and camaraderie did you form while you were serving? It, well, you know, you pick your friends. You know, you have you play your uh, volleyball or oh, yeah. you know on your day off just to relax. All on the base, was, though. Yes. Yeah. Yes, all on the base. You didn't go. I didn't anywhere. drink. I mean, we, we no. went out once in a while. You know, if you if you get a pass, but. Uh, everybody to the bars and drinking. I never drank in my life. Really? I, no, you know, so I, now I'm, I'm my old age, I'm trying to, <laughs> I have a glass of wine here and there, you know. Yeah, and okay, even now, I, I'm learning to have a beer now. Good, okay. I could never stand liquor. My really? My God, yeah. Wow. My vice was smoking. Oh, God, I was a heavy smoker. Really? Did you? I, I drove a bus and I was smoking four packs a day. After you served or what? Yes, yeah. after I served, yes. Four okay. packs a day. Yeah. Wow. So, um... It was what, very hard to put down. I, bet you, <laughs> I, I quit. You, you finally know. quit. Yeah, I quit 20 years ago. Good for you. Yeah. And not only the, the health risk, but it's expensive to... Oh, spend. my God. Did you see what a cigarette goes for now? <laughs> yeah. So, um, back to Nam. So, you said, you mentioned to me before that you were exposed to Agent Orange. They used to spray. They used to, uh, you... you you see fields and fields of, of, of brown, you know, all the grass that's green, beautiful. You know, if you look at Vietnam, everything is green, mm -hmm. beautiful green. But uh, they used to put these planes, C-130s, with the spray things on it, and they would spray the, the area. With the, what was that for? To kill foliage because they didn't want, these guys used to sneak up on us. Oh, okay. You know, get rid of the foliage, you know, the trees and the... Uh, mm -hmm grass and all that. Were you, I guess they didn't know then that it was dangerous, no, so they didn't tell you to take cover or anything. <laughs> wow. Did you feel the effects of it? 
at, while no. they were doing it? No. 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 Huh. What about afterwards? Well, you know, what, in Saigon was good. We didn't get any of that there, but when we moved up to Benoit, uh, uh, what was the name? It wasn't exactly Benoit, that, uh, oh, Mongbin. Okay. It's, uh, it, we, they moved from Saigon to, uh, from Tansanu to Long to Longbin. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, I think it was Benoit Airport right there, mm -hmm. Longbin Airport, one mm -hmm. of those. That's where we flew out of when we came okay. home. Okay. That wasn't a military airport. Well, they used it. They the used military it? used it, yes. Oh, okay. Um, it was civilian boat because I saw TWA plane come in. Oh, really? Huh. So you sound like you know Vietnamese a little, the way you say the, no, say the you cities. Know what? Well, Did, it's 50 years, don't forget. We yeah. came home, it's 50, and I knew a lot of words. Right now, yes, we, I don't know what that thing. At that time, you picked up something? A little, yeah. We, but, well, the kids used to hang out with us. you know. Like, really? Yeah. How did you know if they were... Well, they lived there. Their house was right there. They oh, were okay. on uh, the compound we were on. They was in, living there. Oh. Yeah. So you felt kind of, you didn't feel threatened by some of the, no, lo not the locals? No, not the locals. No. How did you know who was good and who was not? You don't. Ooh. That's the hard part. Yeah. Wow. You, you could go into Saigon or you could be on the road or you, next to one of these uh, <laughs> bad guys. Wow. <laughs> You'll never know. Yep. Wow. That must have been kind of scary. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of spots in uh, uh, Malai or something like that. To, it was a northern uh, city. They used to kids with shoeboxes. They used to plant bombs in there and go by where soldiers were. Just like now the uh, the terrorists. Yeah. They, 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 they were doing that back then. So they gave the kids the shoebox with a bomb? Yeah. Did the kid know what was going to happen? I have no idea. Oh. But they blew them up. The yeah. box would blow up, and the kid would be killed. Yep. Wow. Did, so you said you didn't go into the cities that much. You no. stayed closer to base. Yeah. No, only if I had a, um, if I had a goal mm -hmm. because of my job, uh -huh. I used to go. In. But I, I didn't. You know, it was a, f it was war. Yeah. You don't know who's your friend. Right. You don't know that. So right. you know, why risk? Right. Your life for what? I didn't drink, you know, I didn't care. Okay. So the people, that, there were soldiers that went into the city to yeah, social day. on their day, day off or yeah. whatever. Yeah. That yeah, is risky. Yeah, very. very risky. Um, <clears throat> were you pretty much doing just any job that came along in addition to the driving? I mean, if you didn't have to drive him anywhere? No, you just, uh, you know, everybody had a job. And oh, yeah. It seemed like uh, it wasn't you either. I, I, it was so hot. Vietnam was so hot. All you the would, time? The, all the time. Year round? Year round. Well, I'll tell you about the winter. In the summer, you'd stand there reading the paper or something, and you would, the paper would be wet by the time you get done with it. Wow. You're sweating. Wow. And in the winter, monsoon season, you oh. know, it, it, it goes down to 70 degrees, and you, you wear a jacket. Wow. Yeah, because it's so hot all year. Yeah, yeah. Then when the monsoon season comes, you're wearing this, it's cold. Because of the rain, too. Yeah, so, right. so it rained, like, it, you, all the time? You would drive, well, in, in the monsoon season, yeah. You would drive up to Benoit from Saigon, and you would get wet, dry, wet. Oh. And But when you got up and got out of the Jeep, you would have a, you know, you're set, mm -hmm. you, you're wet. Wow. How, how do you live in that intense? You, how, don't you're a soldier. You? It's your job. Wow. You do it. Wow. I mean, it, even at night it rains, but the ground gets all wet. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, you know, it's, uh, we had cement slabs that you, we slept on. Uh, we, the, the bunks was oh, yeah. cement slab. Oh, okay. Know. That helped a little, but yeah. still. How long is monsoon season? I, I don't remember. Yeah. 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so... How, how about staying in touch with family and friends back home? How did that work out? Yeah, I used to write. Letters? Yeah, my father and my sister. You know, there was, they wrote? Yeah. How, how long My father you? missed me the most. He was that. Uh, Weren't they worried? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, so you, when you were off duty, you basically stayed on the base? Yes. Right? Um, 
Anything else about? Well, we had a pool room upstairs. You know, there was a like they had. I think they took over a house from the from oh, yeah? those people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there was a downstairs. You had that barn upstairs. You would have a, a pool room. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, ping pong. I don't think it was a pool. There was a ping pong table. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. So wait, you arrived in Vietnam. What year? Nineteen uh, sixty-six. I spent the whole year sixty-six in Vietnam. Okay. And then? Because I extended a, 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 a month. Oh, you did? Yeah, Lieutenant Chair asked tell me, he says, listen, you, if, you, if you stay here a little longer, it'll be 90 days or less. I go, what's that? He says, well, I, I wasn't educated, so I was pretty stupid when it came to things <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like that. I was a good driver, but brain-wise. <laughs> <laughs> um, he says, That's, if, you go, if you come back home for 90 days or less, you go right home. Oh. You don't have to go assigned to another uh, base. Oh. Is that really? So he goes, I see, I don't want to stay here. They, they're killing us for you. He goes, no, I make sure you don't go out. Oh, nice. So he gave me a job for, uh, I think I extended a month. Okay. To fill up sandbags. Oh, okay. You know, to make... Uh, Barriers, like yeah, right. safe, yeah, safe walls. Barriers, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, listen, <laughs> it's better than going out there. You you saved know? your life, yeah. yeah. Wow. So when you came back in '67, yeah, January seven, uh, January seven, '67, I think it was. Okay. And, and so, th they gave you the option to re up, or no? Oh yeah. Every day they come up with the. Really. And you. Oh, I had an offer you, you, because I became an E four spe specialist oh. E four. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you start out as a private, mm -hmm. first class, and then uh, second and third, and then fourth. You get this funny look of patch, mm -hmm. and then he goes to me. And my lieutenant says, "I make you a E5." So I go E5. Is that specialist? Or I want E5 sergeant, three stripes. Oh. I give you the three stripes. Oh. I said, "No, no, I'm going home." Really? Yeah. You didn't. Yeah, well, didn't getting promoted gets you more money or responsibility. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. But you didn't want it to no, stay. I want it home. Yeah. <laughs> so you were. You don't want to push it. You yeah. lived that long. You don't want to push it. That's true. But so once you left. You didn't stay in the army in the states. That was no, the no. This they drove me. I wanted to get discharged in uh, 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 California because mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm a kid from Italy. Never saw anything. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to see California. Mm -hmm. You know, you always Hollywood, this and that, yeah. San Francisco. And uh, they won't let me out there. They said, no, no. You live in this because a lot of guys would get discharged. You know, that's what we used to hear, read. You know. Um, Guys get discharged in California, and they get on drugs, they get in some oh. sorts of trouble, they die, you know. Mm -hmm. So, they were, they, they discharged me at uh, uh, Air Force Base McGuire in New Jersey. Okay, McGuire. McGuire. Yeah, Fort Dix. Okay. Fort Dix. Yeah. And then you, your folks they told They put me on a bus to uh, 42nd Street. Okay. To go home. You went home. And you weren't married at that point? No. Okay. So, what did you do once you got home? I went back to the old job. You did? Digging ditches. Construction. Working construction. But then I had a cousin that, he was in the Army during World War II. Oh. And yeah, he came in Italy to visit us. Mm -hmm. This guy, Al, Al DeSena. He used to live out here in Deer Park. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he um, says, you want to go back to that? You digging ditches? Come on, I'll show you something. So he took me with him by the water airport, and he worked for this uh, company, Tribal Coach, mm -hmm. driving a bus. I don't, I, I don't know how to drive this. He goes, you're in the Army. You right. drove five ton? Right. You could drive this. So he showed me everything. He got me CDL license. Oh, nice. And I became a bus driver. How long did you do that? 42 years. Good for you. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Was a bus for what? Just yeah, pick up people in the street, you know, okay. the Queen, public and, bus. And yeah, public bus, okay. yeah, public transportation. Wow. How was it when you first came home? How were you received by family and friends? Oh, the, the first, my first experience that I had, they, they dropped us off, the bus dropped us off at, uh, what is that, uh, Port Authority? Okay. And uh, a guy goes, baby killer. Oh. I had no idea what, what, what is, you know, what's, then I found out about that guy, Cali or something, that, he killed the, the oh, yeah. machine in, gun, the whole Vietnam. bunch of kids and all yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, baby killer. Uh, wow. Look the other way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, nobody, 
you know, it, it was such an unpopular war. Yep. I mean, now, it, it, what is it, 50 years later, we're getting a little recognition. Yes, you know, finally. That, uh, yeah. Thank God. Yep. Yeah, long ways, man. But what about with your family? How were they? When you came home, how did how were you received by your oh, family? Yeah. I, you know, it was a, the baby in the family, you know, the boy. Yeah. The youngest. You were the youngest? Well, my sister Rose is the youngest okay. girl, but I was the youngest boy. Okay. So and that was my father's favorite, you know, in those days. <laughs> how was it readjusting to civilian life? Uh, it was easy. You know, I had a lot of friends here. Nice. You know, I, and where I grew up in Massbet. Um, Queens. Yeah, yeah Massbet, Queens, yeah. They, uh, I was a king, you know, like a, yeah. you know, a little guinea, you know, that I was very popular in those days. Nice. So you still had friends and uh, yeah. got, got back yeah, in with just got group. back to the old swing, you know. That's nice. Uh, have you remained in contact with any of your fellow vets at no. all? No. 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 You only, I, I got together with that guy, Mike Anzalone. Oh, yeah. That lives in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. That He's the guy that saved me. Yeah. Um... And then, like, I think he came over once or twice from the Bronx. Oh. Yeah, and then he visited me, and I, I, I know. But then, you know, you, you don't... You lose touch. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad. Um, are you a member of any veterans' organizations? No, no? I never, never belonged to any. Listen, I, I was so into my job, mm -hmm. providing for my four kids. Oh, wait, so wait, how did you meet your wife? We didn't... Oh, we're dancing. When? When was that? You oh, got 1967. back in... Oh, the year you got back? Yeah. I used to go dancing at this place called The Manor. Okay. On Northern Boulevard at 211th Street. Okay. And, uh, and she, one of her friends says, come on, I want to introduce you to a guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, her name is Janice, so she was uh, that's Joe DeSena, you know, Joe. <laughs> and man, I fell in love with my wife. Nice. So great. Nice. When did you get married? October 68. 68. October, uh, oh Jesus, she'll kill me, 24. <laughs> October 24, 68. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, four kids later. Really? So what did you have with your kids? Three boys and one girl. Nice. Yeah, Chris, Jana, Joey, and Marco. Nice. Do they live on in Long Island? Or? Well, that's why we are on Long Island. I love Queens. Oh, God, I love Queens. I got so many friends there. I retired there, played cards with a lot of Italians. And, mm -hmm. But... Uh, my son moved out here. My daughter moved out here. Really? And what are we going to do? Yeah. So my wife wants to be with our grandchildren. Yep. <laughs> and here we go. How many grandchildren do you have? Oh, two. Two girls. Nice. Nice. So. Got nobody carrying my name, though. I hate that. But your sons might say, have children one day? Well, Chris has one, um, one daughter. Oh, okay. And I uh, got Marco. He's a... Teacher in uh, Baruch College. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh -huh. Joey, he's, he moved to North Carolina. Oh. Nobody wants girls, nobody wants kids. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they wait a long time sometimes, yeah. kids to have kids. Are they all married, the four of them? No, no. just uh, my daughter, Jana, and uh, she has a Jenna, a daughter, and my Chris got uh, Julia. Oh, they might still, you might still have a, a boy oh, coming. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Wow. And, you got a, and Chris is uh, taking care of, uh, he met a young lady with a son named Tommy. Her husband died. Oh, wow. So, but the son has autism. Oh. And, oh, we love that kid. He's yeah. such a great boy. Good, good. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, so. Um, how do you think your wartime experiences affected your life? I, you know what? I, I think everybody should go to the service. Really? I like I like the uh, Israelis. Mm -hmm. If you live there, you join and you serve. Yeah. And uh, I think it's such a great thing. I, I I think every kid should be in the army. Yeah. What do you think? It. How do you think the military impacted your feelings about war or the military in general? I I, I loved it. Yeah. Uh, you know it's. Well, I love the country because they would listen. Without America, I wouldn't have what I have. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. You know. So. What do you think are some life lessons you might have learned from the military? Um. Get along with people. Mm. 
you know, different. Yeah, you had all kinds, kinds yeah. all types. Everything. Don't forget, I'm from Italy. I know Italians. You know, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And a lot of guys that come here from Italy, they hang out with Italians. Yeah. That's why you have that uh, broken English and yeah. all that. Your English I, is perfect. I, well, not it's not. But <laughs> when I get excited, the, <laughs> the guinea comes out. But uh, I, I never hung out with Italians hmm. ever. Oh, that's interesting. And never went to school. You know, like. I learned everything by saying, what does that mean? Uh, you, know, you know, ask questions, you know. When you came over at 13? Yes, ma'am. You, you didn't speak any English? Not at all. Wow. And your parents, nobody spoke no, English? No, nobody. How did they all learn? Um, they didn't. Wow. Um, my mother was illiterate. Hmm. She came from a farm, mm -hmm. and they never moved out of the farm, so she never went to school. Mm -hmm. And she met my father when she was like, what? very young, 16 or something, they got married. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, her brother helped my father run away because in those days in Italy, you run away with the girl that you love. You know, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, wow. you hear the story, I love it. Wow. And your brothers and sisters, too, didn't speak when they came over here? No, no, nobody. But we all, you know, I remember my sisters, um, a night they used to go to Newtown High School, which you had to, have to take a bus from uh, Mass, but to go to... Uh, Corona. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they learned English. They learned English. Nice. Um, um, so you told me you were had you were injured at one time. I forgot to ask you about that. The your hand. How did your arm? How My did that arm. Work? Yeah. I, how did that well, happen? Well, when you uh, I was a commander, a company commander's driver, mm -hmm. and every time we came under attack. I had to take the Jeep with the radio and with the orders. So there were briefcase with all the orders in it, and they would tell you uh, what radio frequency to tune in because the, you had to coordinate with the planes and the helicopters. Mm -hmm. But what happens when they came under attack, we, they, we, we got assigned to the east end of the runway, mm -hmm. and all the action was at the west end. Mm -hmm. And you could see bullets flying, helicopters, planes diving. It was crazy, mm -hmm. and um, were you in the jeep at this point? Yeah, yes. Well, I had the jeep with me mm -hmm. and with my men. You know, like when you go there, you pull up and you set up the perimeter. Oh, you know, you set up a, a, a machine gun there, a machine gun there, like crossfire, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the guys would, you know, with the rifles. Mm -hmm. But you would get a, a, a the sign area, mm -hmm. and uh, because every the compound that we were in uh, in Tanzanut. It was all engineers, cooks, uh, administrative workers, mm -hmm. but they all had guns oh. to protect the perimeter mm -hmm. when we came under attack. Okay. Yeah. And, but then how did you injure your arm? I, we came under attack. They were warding uh, uh, the, the uh, airport. Oh. oh. And, uh, and it came, uh, we had a... Uh, it's a coffee. It's okay. We had a... Uh, we came under attack, and I, I dove... Uh, to, you could hear the bullets hitting, because over there, the, the roads are uh, elevated, uh -huh. and, and you have like uh, uh, rice paddies, mm -hmm. you know, with the water, and it keeps the water from running out, you know, so you were on top of the road, mm -hmm. and I remember the bullets hitting the, gra the, gra the uh, dirt, you know, wow. and I'm driving, so I took a jeep, and I, they sent me for coffee. Uh. It was like a few miles. What, like 10 blocks away, you know, to go to, back to the compound and get the, uh, I had a big pot like this. Okay. And uh, <laughs> everything went flying because when the blue bolts were hitting the ground, mm -hmm. I drove right into the ditch. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wasn't going to get hit. Right. So, uh, was this going to get the coffee or coming back? Coming back. Coming back. So I wish it was getting going. I didn't waste all that coffee. Yeah, you lost all the coffee. <laughs> yeah, so that's, I, I, and I, you know what? I remember in a hospital for seven days, but I don't remember if it was for that because it was over here. It was all messed up. Bloody, open. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Did it? And I didn't even know until the guy said, "Sure, you're bleeding." Wow. So, were you? Was it hard to move your arm, or once you got out? No, 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 not now. No. Then you mean? Yeah. Then. Yeah, well, it, you know, like. At first, you don't know anything, right? And then your adrenaline slows down a little bit, and ouch! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So after the seven days in the hospital, you went right back out to yeah to my your unit. You know, yeah. Wow. Drive my little time around. Did your folks know that you were injured? Uh no. No. I wouldn't tell them that. Yeah. Um, 
So good. I'm glad we covered that because I forgot to ask you that before. So. What, what message would you like to leave for future generations that might watch this video? Join the Army. Great. Or serve. Serve. Yep. Is there anything else you think we haven't touched on or did any experience or any situation that you want to share that we haven't covered? Oh, no, this is great. We're good? Thank you, okay. yes. Thank you so much, Joe, for everything. Thank you. For your service and being with us.